Thank you so much. So let's welcome together Pastor Mrs. Um, Olumoyegun. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. No, it's okay. Okay. Um, yeah, good afternoon. Everything. Um, Church on the Rock, because you need to know where you are and greet the right person. Um, thank you, Pastor Beardo, Pastor Nike. Thank you, everyone, for the warm reception. Um, I'm sorry if I wore food a bit last week. There's a combination of nerves going on and, you know, but we give God praise. Heavenly Father, we thank you one more time for the entrance of your word that brings light and bring understanding. I pray, Father God, that you will bypass my humanity, my weakness, my limitations, and you will speak your heart to your children, oh God. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done in our midst this afternoon. We bless your name, oh God, because you are indeed the God of comfort, that through the comfort we receive from you, we are able to comfort others. Speak to our hearts, oh God, in the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Please be seated where well, you are seated already. Praise the Lord. So last week, um, we, I don't know if I gave you a topic, but we were looking at being born again by faith, you know, and um, this is more like um, part two, being born again by faith, you know. Um, so basically, one of the scriptures we looked at um, was Ephesians chapter two, verse eight, and I emphasized on the bit that talked about us being saved by faith and not by our works, you know, because sometimes we, um, just like it happened in the Acts of Apostles when people gave their lives to Christ and those who are like, bona fide Christians, those who have, you know, who have been there before the foundation members, you know, began to mount pressure on the Greeks or on the, let me say the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people. Now, oh, now that you are in church, you have to be circumcised, you have to do this, that, and the third. And, you know, even in our day and age, people, sometimes when people come to church, I'm not talking about this church. I'm just saying what <clears throat> happens in some churches, especially in certain parts of the world that you know of, they assess you. You know, if your skirt is too high, they, it, not, nothing about, oh, Jesus loves you. You are welcome as you are. They will give you a wrapper. If you are not covering your hair, they will give you a scarf. Now, don't get me wrong. It's good to be modest. But there needs to be balance. Sometimes we pay so much attention. So I may dress Christian, you know, I don't even think my dress is long enough, Christianly, you know. Let's say it's touching the ground like a house. Pastor Nike is a proper Christian. <laughs> See a <laughs> flowing robe kind of, you know, and cover your hair and not wear jewelry, not wear makeup, even the wristwatch, I mean, come on, it has to be Christian wristwatch. And every, I mean, it's true, no, no, nothing flashy, yeah? And we assume, you look at the person and you think, yeah, she's a Christian. But then when issues come up, the thing that will come out, you know, Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Let's say she's going, she's going on a lift. I don't know if you've seen that skit. She's on the fifth floor, going to the ground floor. Which direction are we going? Down. So you ask Sister Susie, are you going down? Are you going, you know, should we press the down button? No, I shall not go down. I'm going up. I'm talking, ah, ah, sister, 
within, you know? So what I'm trying to say is that, is, I mean, the outward appearance, we are not going to knock it, is good. We need to, there needs to be a balance. But sometimes what we need to start with is the, the, the state of the heart, the relationship with God, Jesus Christ being seated in our hearts because on the outward appearance, the person may look Christian. Even the car may be born again. Have you seen born again cars? The Lord is my shepherd. Hey, Jesus is God. I, I, I don't know about you, but I, I don't like all those. I'm, that, that's just me. I'm not saying it's wrong. But then cuts our brother that has born again sticker. And you see the finger. <laughs> Imagine if you raise the finger and someone who caught you, and then realize it's one digging in church. So you quickly just adjust your hand like, ah, God bless you, bro. You know, <laughs> I think I was walking around this area some years ago, and somebody caught me. And honestly, the flesh came up. I wanted to signal, but unfortunately, I didn't know the right finger to raise. So I did like this and I thought, no, I didn't want to give him thumbs up. I wanted to send him somewhere else, but I bet the Holy Spirit told me, yeah, sister, Christian, Christian sister, you know, praise the Lord. Anyway, so basically, um, like I said, yes, last week, I was going to say yesterday, last week was like the um, foundation and today we'll just be on it a bit more as the Holy Spirit leads. You know, there's a scripture I want to call your attention to. When people have given their lives to Christ, when we have given our lives to Christ, if we look at 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2, 1 Peter, and by God's grace, what I will share will be something that is physically relevant to us. And for some reason, my tablet is going, no. It's coming back to life. First Peter <clears throat> chapter two, verse two. Right. Ah. As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the world that you may grow thereby. If you can give me King James, please. Because some of us were born and raised on King James, you know. Okay, as newborn. Desire the sincere milk of the world that ye may grow thereby. I mean, that sounds more Christian -y than ye, all ye members in this church, you know. It talks about the sincere milk of the world. The sincere milk. Two things I want to bring up. Can you imagine how many mothers are here? I can see one at the back holding a baby. God bless you, sis. You know, imagine baby pops out. Oh, I wish it's that easy. So you now put pampas, a bottle of milk, and whales, and maybe a shawl around the baby, and put a note, just you know, to be to be instructive. Dear baby, welcome to this world. There is a pampas for you, or pampa. I don't know what the singular of pampas is. Here's a dapper for you. Here's a bottle of milk. And here is a shawl in case you are feeling cold. Yours sincerely, mom. And you just, because you need to, you need to meet up with friends. Now, if you, you as the, let's say you are the health visitor or you are just the neighbor. You are hearing baby cry and you go in and see the notes and see those things that mom left. What would be your reaction? You are, okay, somebody said, please. You know, you will think that lady has done what? She's lost it. Now, my dear darling, how old are you? I know you, oh, you're 17. Just like me, <laughs> I wish, you know, I mean. Now, do you think that is sensible? Are you sure? 
Imagine she needed to go and do her nails. Is that not logical? It's not. Good. God bless you. But sometimes that's how we are. We led somebody to Christ. We traveled, you know, push, water broke. Sorry, gentlemen. Baby came out. They accepted Christ. And what do we do? See you later. Bye. How are they going to go? Because we didn't bother to think of the aftercare. All right? Now, just like that seems bizarre to you. Somebody mentioned police. Somebody else may think, let me just take the baby. I'll go and look after them, you know? But spiritually, if we led somebody to Christ and just left them, like I told you last week, three, how many times did I come out to accept Jesus? Uh, hey, for those who were not here, three times. Now, things were not as, it's, as it is now. We are talking of the 80s for whatever. There was one person who followed me up and she kept phoning and bear in mind, we didn't have phone at home. The only place she could call me was at work. So basically that's Monday to Friday. That's the only time she has the opportunity. And she kept calling. Of course, I didn't understand at that time that what she was doing is called follow up. You know, where did you read today? So in most cases, I'll make sure, even if it's one verse, I'll make sure I read that one verse because I know that lady will call me and one of the questions she will ask is where did I read? You know, don't ask me what it means to me. It didn't mean anything, you know. But my point is, the day she stopped calling was when I told her I went for a conference and I, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. As you should hear the way she was joyful. But of course, I was thinking, you know, I didn't understand. And that was the last time she called. But my point is, as, as children of God, or as so winners, evangelists, whatever we want to name ourselves. The Bible says, like newborn babes, desire sincere me. I mean, you know when the newborn baby pops, the first thing that comes to mind, in fact, you know, naturally, or I don't know, maybe we should interview that gentleman, <laughs> you know? The first thing they will do, they put their mouth, even if it's a man as flat chested as anything, they put their mouth there. They are looking for milk, you know? So now imagine that zeal, that passion that baby has. There's nothing like mom, maybe let me give mom a break. She's, why is it that when you are sleeping, that's when their eyes are wide awake and they want to play. You know, sometimes we need to counsel those babies. Anyway, so the same zeal, the same passion that newborn baby has for milk, I will still talk about that sincere bit. That is the same passion we need to have when we give our lives to Christ. Or if you are following up a new Christian, that is one of the things you need to tell them that they need the milk, then, you know, imagine if a baby, I mean, you've seen those adverts on, on TV, <clears throat> excuse me, when they advertise Sudan or, you know, it's always Africa, all those places where people, and when you see those babies, indeed, you will know this baby is, is malnourished, you know, so that is what happens, ritual malnourishment. That is what happens if after we give our lives to Christ, we've accepted Jesus by faith, but we are not fed. And nowadays, more than ever before, we need the sincere milk of the word. Sincere, let's do a bit of English lesson. I'm not a teacher by profession, but I'm a, I'm a mother. So mothers are natural teachers anyway, you know? So I looked up the meaning of that word sincere because in 2022, hey, there are all sincere words going, going on out there. 
there are some unbalanced messages that it, it, on the on the on the surface it may sound Christian, it may sound Christianese, but is is what's the opposite of sincere? Insincere. That doesn't sound strong enough. Anyway, it's fake because God bless you. Thank God for this us in the house. You know. There's genuine, that's one of the meanings. Genuine, real, heartfelt. Heartfelt. Pastor was sharing about how people call, called, because it's called, um, you know, visited and all that. Now, he has that spiritual thermostat going on that you could tell when people are just saying things or when it's heartfelt. I told you last week, before my mom passed away, when people share on their status, my mom died, my dad died. You know, you have, in fact, my phone has gotten used to those words. Even if I want to say I'm so late, it will say so sorry. Please accept my, ah, uh -uh, I'm not going that way, you know? So I have that kind of mantra for people who lost their parents or family members, you know, please accept, the thing will come up, my deepest condolences no, 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 in this difficult time. But you know, I, I'm not saying that is a wrong thing to say, but if you have walked that path, your response will be different. When, when we heard, first of all, I read and I reread, well, Pastor, yeah, his dad, oh, he came to this country. Oh, so that really got my attention. And like I told you last week, only, I'm glad you said what you said about, even if you called and all you are saying is, um, mm, because there was a situation whereby one of our brethren, one of those very lovely brothers in church passed away. And in my mind, I have, prepared my speech. When she picks the call, this is what I will say. These are the scriptures I will quote. Brethren, the lady phone rang. Yours truly, I was hoping I will leave a message. I think I will flow if I'm leaving a message because it's like a monologue, isn't it? But when I heard her voice, everything I planned is like something just press delete and it wasn't saved. So when she came online and I'm like, ah, sis, uh, I'm sorry. And she said, oh, that's fine. And I'm thinking, um, 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 <sighs> she must have felt that, okay, this girl is so cool, feeling awkward. So she was the one talking and I'm like, uh -huh. <laughs> You know, I don't know if that happens to you. You have prepared your speech. The, you know, ah, many are the afflictions of the righteous. The Lord gives and Lord takes away. Thank God Baba was in Christ. Baba slept in the Lord. And then the person comes on and boom, you can't, if, scripture, everything is gone. And you are thinking, Adjum, okay, come on now, say something. And you are, uh, um, um, uh, um, uh, um or the, the easiest one, it is well. I tried that one with a sister who lost an 18 year old. Sis, it is well. She said, is it? Ah, I thought, hi. <laughs> Maybe like I said, this it is well thing here. Or on this occasion, it's not working. So both of us were quiet on the line. She's, I mean, <sighs> And I'm thinking, Holy Spirit, oh yeah, say something. So I just kept quiet. And so she, you know, started talking, I grief. And I'm like, wow, hmm, 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 hmm. I can't say praise God. I can't say we thank God because we are talking of a teenager. So at that point, I just kept quiet. Guess what? When we finished, she, she said, thank you. That was very encouraging. And I'm thinking, what bit? The, it is well, I be the, mm, um, the um, you know, but the fact that I, I think we must have been like 15 minutes 
And if you came in, you'll be thinking, I they talking, you have to respond me. I didn't have jack to say. Why am I going to say, I, I know how it feels. I don't know, I don't know how it feels. With him, I know how it felt to a degree. But with this lady, I don't know how it feels. So I just sat, I just held the phone and kept quiet. And then when, when we finished, she said, thank you. That was quite a relief. And I'm thinking, what, 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 what bit? The whom, the um, that, that was it. Now back to sincere, sincere. Sincere because it has to be the authentic word of God. Because people, like I said, people are preaching. Imagine a church and it's amazing. These are the kind of churches that you will see thousands. I don't know if you saw that clip. I don't know what gospel this man is preaching. He asked them to bring two drinks to church, a bottle of Fanta, a bottle of Coke, and they are wearing white. So he puts it on their head and say, Fanta is sweet. Your life will be sweet. And they too, they are saying, amen. First of all, if the thing is very cold, I don't want you pouring it on my head. Bless it, I will take it home and drink. He's pouring it on their head. Based on what? Based on what? Or you want to talk about the one who tells members. Go out there, Bible says, I don't know what scripture you use for them. Eat grass. And they too. They are eating grass. Sorry? Abby, I mean, I mean, you are wondering what, what? Paul was asking the Galatians, who casts a spell on you? You, I mean, I love your generation. That's why I said I'm 17. Because their generation are children, they ask questions. Yes. When we go born again, if they tell you, we are going into seven days fasting and praying. You say, amen. <laughs> we don't, honestly, I don't, do you question your name? We don't question. But our dear generation, mom, where do, you know you always say that uh, praying in the language of the Holy Spirit. I said, yeah. She said, where is that in the Bible? And I'm thinking, ah, oh, um, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The Bible says they spoke as the spirit gave them utterance. That's why we coined that phrase, language of the Holy Spirit or language orchestrated. But, but that got me thinking. Sometimes as a parent, when they ask questions, you may say, you know, don't, 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 how dare you? But it's good. It's good. If they see something in the Bible or they see you do something that doesn't match the word, then we ask. And that is what we should be doing. If somebody, even if it's us, if we say, ah, brethren, we are doing this, we are going to South End on Sea to pray at the seaside. Ross, what is wrong with us being here and praying our prayer? You know, Hey, those who are trusting God for husband, meet me on the beach. Ross. Uh -uh. That's why I said the word of God, the Bible qualifies it as sincere, sincere milk. Even in a certain country that I'm not allowed to mention, those milk for, for, um, formula, you need to check NAFDA, NASDAQ, or something dark on the container to make sure it's authentic because of some try because of some you know people people's that 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 that, that, that we put something people should do it can you imagine and you want to make pro what kind of anyway we are not into marketing today the bible says in second timothy 3 verse 16 let's look at the benefits, the benefits we receive from the word of God. Second, ah, God bless you. And that from, ah, bros, I didn't mean everything should be in King James. You can now use another version. I just, you know, it just not that sincere bit. Okay, and that from childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you what? wise for salvation through 
faith, which is in Christ Jesus, verse 16. That's actually where, where I need, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for, look at it, for doctrine. Say doctrine. For reproof, for correction. Those are two words we may not like. For instruction in righteousness. I remember <clears throat> as a young bride, this was over 32 years ago, my husband offended me. And I decided I'm not going to talk to him. I will not talk to him. So I opened the Bible. Of course, I want Holy Spirit to minister to me. Where will I open to? Ephesians, I think chapter five or six, forgive. So I close the Bible. Ah, what, kind of, what kind of instruction is that? Forgive, you know? The Bible, the word of God is for doctrine, for teaching, for reproof, for correction correction so when do you need correction when you make a mistake when you make errors so i say can you imagine me coming here now and say praise that well pastor nick i said who has testimony i have testimony praise the lord this is the sixth month that i last spoke to my husband and I shall carry on until we set to this at the feet of Jesus. Praise! Would you not think, let's call her aside and cast out that unforgiving spirit. Can you imagine? But sometimes that is, that is the kind of things you hear and see. I'm not saying people will say, oh, eh, I stole last week or anything like that, but You'll be wondering, do you read the word of God? Or you, you know, people can twist the word of God to say what they want to say. The Bible says, he that still should still no more. But somebody can say, he that still should still no more walking <laughs> with their hands. So just, you know, twist the word of God. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. So it is very crucial in this day and age for us to guard our hearts, our ears, our eyes to what is flying out there. You know, because of COVID, the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of what? Of fear. But Somebody, and I'm not trying to, this is, it's everywhere. So don't say, ah, oh, uh -huh. if you're watching me online, ah, oh, she's referring, I'm not referring to anyone. But God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind, okay? Yes, COVID was nasty, took lives, did all sorts of nastiness, however, if you have the, the confidence, if I tell you now that, ah, <clears throat> two years ago, my mother died though. So next Saturday, we are turning the back of mama. For those who don't understand Yoruba, you know, we are celebrating, but in Yoruba, they will say, one year you kupada. It's like mama lied on the, on the right. So we have to reposition her. So that means we are getting a hall, the biggest hall in South End. And the color of the day is um, emerald green and gold. Yeah? Meeting, I mean, pa meeting. party starts at 7 p.m. Even if you went to work, you will make the party because number one, you don't want to offend. Yeah? And you will sit in that hall, maybe till 11 on one spot, oh, but you are not afraid of COVID, yeah? Or we go to our stores, Morrison's, Tesco, all of them, or you expensive ones, you may go to which, uh, wait, thank you, Waitrose, the one that you look at the price and you'll be thinking, Nikini, this one is cheaper, I beg, you know? You don't have issues, 
going to the shops, you bump into people, they bump into you and all that. But then to come to church for two hours, two and a half, we are looking at a wristwatch. When you are watching <clears throat> all the men in the house, when Arsenal is playing against West Ham or <laughs> Chelsea, thank you. You don't have issues. If your wife comes, that's the best time to ask men for money. When, when, <laughs> when, when whoever supposed West Ham, or, I mean, sorry, it's not West Ham, Arsenal, all the Arsenal fans, when you know that they have scored, Ask him for two papers. He will go, we'll take my card. You know, because he doesn't want, he doesn't want to be distracted at that time. Eh? But you don't care. After the 90 minutes, they will have extra time. You will still be trusting God that they will, you know, they will score another one or two goals. How many of you are guilty? Raise your hand, say amen. You know, and if as a lady, we are Christians, we are born again. But then occasionally we may need the Lord to speak to us through Netflix. And you watch that movie from beginning to end, you did not get up once because you need to know what Jack did. Did he really break her heart? Did he really marry her? Oh, so what happened to them? But then you come to, ah, God bless you, my sister. When you come to church, you are thinking, ah, ah, when are they going to end? Eh? Pastor, ah, ah, Pastor is still carrying on. The, the, the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. The Lord will help us. And you know the irony of life. Church is where they lie. Like I said, they, they are plenty. But when we are talking about being born again by faith, I went to a church in Nigeria um, 2018, I think it was. I was asking my sister, I said, is this the second service? She said, no. I said, is this their branch? She said, no, this is the main church. I said, okay. So we, 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 we couldn't go in because prayer was going on. And then when prayer was finished, they removed the, help me now, the, the you know, the, the barrier, the, 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 the. So they removed it and we went in. When the man of God started preaching about how we need to be conformed to the image of Christ, how we need to die to self, I said, no wonder. No wonder people are not falling on each other to enter church. But if it's seven steps to immediate prosperity, how you can become a millionaire by next Friday. Uh -uh. Everyone on your phone, you will call them. It is happening. It is happening. So what is it with us? I think, you know, if Muslims are not talking to us, we, let's talk to ourselves. What is it with us and prosperity? What is it with us? And, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm allergic to poverty as you see me. I, I mean, we, we, whenever you are feeling from and they say any allergies, apart from a fever is poverty, I am allergic. I am, I mean, come on, I am allergic to poverty. So don't get me wrong. But at the same time, God bless you, Pastor Nikki. At the same time, I want to make heaven. I, I mean, come on. I, 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 I I told one brother when I was witnessing to him, I said, okay, like two, I mean, some weeks ago we were in Nigeria. And then, Kai, talk about sauna. We experienced sauna. You know, when you are inside building and this is fighting under, you assume that the weather, God bless you. You think, ah, ah, weather, weather, weather is not bad today. My niece nodded, <laughs> it isn't bad. I left my scarf, I'm like, ah, I need my scarf. It's a bit chilly in this hall. Then I said, show me where the loo is. It's over there. I went out and I thought, yeah, who switched on the heater? You know, the, the heat. And hey, I realized. Now, the thing is, whenever I'm in Nigeria, I'm doing a countdown from day one. 
nine more days, eight, seven, six. I know when time comes, I'm on my way to Muritala Mohammed Airport. That is Nigeria, that is Africa. But hell, there's nothing like, excuse me, whoever is in charge, like Dr. Nike was asking, who is in charge here? I, I think I'm in the wrong place, I need to leave. Come on, I can't stand this heat, it's not, ah. It is forever and ever. We will not go to hell in the name of Jesus. But you know what, brethren? The antidote is not about, ah, minus me, I shall not go to hell. No, it's about our walk with Christ. And that is why we need the word of God. The sincere milk, the real word, the one that makes you say, ouch. I told you when they were preaching and I was looking around that somebody must have told this man about me. That is the Holy Spirit. The word of God that makes you feel, can't they just round up? Why is she talking about, you know? That is the word of God. It's not every time double portion, double blessing, name it, claim it, you receive it. No, there are, there are the ones that make you cry. God, deliver me from this anger. Deliver me from eating too much. Some of us came to this country we were like, mm -hmm. you know, like she reminds me. I will show you, you know, those kind of pictures. And then gradually, gradually, I remember I went to buy shoe one day. This old man wanted to be friendly. He looked at me and said, so when is the baby due? This is 2005. My youngest was born five years. I said he was due five years ago. You should see the way his face went right. You know, and I wasn't trying to be mean. I'm not pregnant. Why are you asking me when is the baby due? Oh, I knew he wanted to, you know, just strike conversation. Ah, and me too, I was just trying to rub it in. I said, hey, it's, it's due five years ago. He said, ha, 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 I'm sorry, madam. I did, I said, it's okay. I'm like, it's okay. Is it not me that needs to do something to, to tell me that looks, ah, ah. Uh -huh. It's me now. So sometimes when I go to buy clothes, I'm, I'm confessing to you now. I don't do and go to the, um, what is it called? Changing room. Changing room to do what? You see me right you are almost saying, excuse me. Oh, it's me. You know, so I don't go. I would rather take it. And when I get home, find out it's the wrong size or the dress shrank before I got home, and then I'll take it back. I went to one shop in Finsbury Park. Madam, that's the changing room. So I tried the dress on. Hey, it went down. Then I'm trying to take it off. And I'm thinking, Jesus, ah, we need to be saying, Holy Spirit. The lady was like, oh, Madam, is everything OK? I said, it's OK. Oh, God. When the thing came out, finally, I just folded it. Is it all right? Is it your right? I said, yeah. I, I should have packed. I said, don't pack it. I just gradually left the room. First of all, I was feeling guilty. And then I thank God. Because if I hear, that means I have to buy the dress by force, by fire. Then it will be standing in my wardrobe and I'll be thinking, Lord, please help me shrink. Or have the dress, you know, I expect, mm, thank you, my sister. So we need the, I'm sorry, we need the word of God. The Bible says, Paul was telling the, um, was telling the church through Timothy. Let's look at it. First Timothy chapter four, verse one. First Timothy chapter four, verse one. And I'm gonna round up very soon. Let's say like 3 p.m. I told you you are in God's house. So he says, now the spirit expressly says that in the latter times, people were in the latter times. Some will depart from the faith. You will not depart from the faith in the name of Jesus. Giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. There are so many doctrines of demons out there that sound genuine heartfelt, real, but they are lies from the pit of hell. 
You know them. If it feels good, do it. That is the Bible. If the Holy Spirit, you know, anyway, political, no, political correctness. If Jesus, my mentor said, if Jesus was politically correct, there would not have been a need for him to go on the cross. If he wanted, but Jesus was the kind who would be very blunt. Imagine you visit someone and he's telling them what to use scribes and Pharisees. Ah, in, his, in the Pharisees, I mean, scribes house, what to you? Because you lay burden some people and you wouldn't use your smallest finger to lift it. Doctrines of demons, making you place priority on the flesh, flesh that we perish. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with us losing weight or even being prosperous. God said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in earth. It is I wish that you, you suffer and prosper and be in earth, even as your soul prospers. But let's not get it twisted. It is not at all cost. Don't make me a millionaire or I will, I, will, I will stop coming to church. Ah, no, don't miss it. We will not miss it. We need to spend time in the word and we need to build intimacy with the Holy Spirit. You know, pastor was saying, I mean, since last week that in all this situation, he needed to hear what God was saying. Because Baba passing away didn't catch God by surprise. Eh, what do you mean? The Sukupola senior has died. Ha, ah, how come? No, God knew from when they are buying ticket. God knew he's sovereign. But you know, in this situation, it's good to be, be still like that song you did. Be still and know that I'm God. There are times there are, there are times, Pastor said it, when you need to switch off everything. No notification. Who said what? Who did he say what? You know, that's one of the wahala with, with social media. Uh, let me just check what they said on Instagram. I, God, I promise I won't spend more than five minutes. So you read and you, you open that video and they have reels. So you laugh at the first one. Second half an hour is gone. Uh, ah, that comments. So you, you know, before you know it, you have spent two hours on social media, just like that. Pick Bible, pick Bible, you know, just to, to ease your conscience. Okay, we are reading today, John 14, verse 16. Jesus said, uh, no, 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 John 14, 16. I pray the Father, and we give you another helper that it may abide with you forever. Hmm. He will give us another helper. He will give us a, a, a comforter. God, I thank you. Holy Spirit, you are my helper. You are my comforter. Five minutes. You make that if you make five minutes. Can you see that the devil is wicked? Or when you decide. I want to wait on the Lord from Monday. Sometimes I have decided, I don't say it anymore. I don't say it loud because that is the day my daughter will come with, mom, I just bought this burger from, you know, no. it cost me 18 pounds. And you will think, 18 pounds, Let me, mm, it looks nice. Uh -huh, take a bite. Ah, oh Jesus, I'm supposed to be fasting, you know? Why is it that when you decide to wait on the Lord, that is when someone in your team will say, oh, hey, it's my birthday, so I'm bringing this kite, and you are thinking, ah, carrot cake. Why couldn't she just do something like chocolate cake that I can easily say, no, I don't eat. And then you will eat that one. And of course, guilt. You're supposed to be fasting, you know? I remember I went for a conference. This is my last thing to say. I went for a conference and they made chocolate gato. As tempting as it was, I wasn't, at that time, I wasn't a chocolate gato person. So I said, no. 
And as a Christian sister, I went to pick fruits. So this way, so lady said, you are so disciplined. I said, don't get it twisted. <laughs> if it was strawberry gato, you will have seen another side. This lady is over there. I said, no, it's OK. I'm OK with this fruit. You know, they get it behind me. Ah, you know? So the Holy Spirit, I don't know about you. Have you been to a place where you ate because there is abundance of food? And at a point, you could hear almost audibly enough. But you are thinking, no, you know, I, 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 I'll just eat this, just this one more drumstick. Tomorrow, from tomorrow, I'm doing a detox. I'm not eating. That is the day my husband will now go and buy pounded yam and a 40 rope. You will care about you food, and I'm thinking, ah, ha, ha, pounded yam, no, it's a wee, you know. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. May the Lord help us. This journey is by faith. Satan is our arch enemy. And pro people of God, sometimes, guess who else is your arch enemy? You is your enemy. And that's why we need to be honest with God. Lord, help me. Help me. You know, flesh, the Bible makes us to know that flesh and the spirit, they are always in conflict. Why did she look at me like that? She didn't even greet me well. She can't even kneel down. Hey, does she know my age? Before I got married, I was, you know, was live story. Culture is different. You know, when people give you something and you, they say, no, you say, you give them something, they say, Thank you. You say don't mention. Do you really don't want them to mention? Because next time they give you give them another thing and they did not mention, you will take offense. So why are we complex? May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Let's rise, please. Let's rise. I want us to just pray. And it's just one prayer point. Like we said, this journey, we started by faith. We will continue by faith and we will end by faith. His grace is sufficient unto us. I don't know your limitations. If you don't have any, just point towards me. Now, Holy Spirit, please help her. Help her to be more like you. Because there are times I will do something and I'll be thinking, Kai, this, 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 Lord, I need help. I need your grace. So let's talk to God. I will give us his grace. Jesus, I mean, Paul said he prayed that I may know him and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death. It's not something that comes easy, you know, for this flesh to die. We need his grace. Holy Spirit, we surrender to you. We need your help that we will be more like you, Lord Jesus, that we will walk in your grace, that we will walk in your power, that we will not serve you only when it's convenient, but we will die to this flesh. Help us, most high God, in the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Please take your seat. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. I told you that she, she is very, she is very uh, spot on with the, with the, with the Lord. And uh, you wouldn't listen to that message and not be encouraged, you know. And the message is simple. It's about being born again by faith. That in our relationship with God, it's not by force. It's by faith in God. And that faith has to grow. Has to be nurtured. The same way you nurture the things you love, 
And she has told us about so many ways by which even nurturing your appetite, the kind of cake, we now know the kind of cake that she likes, you know. But at the same time, behind that is self-control, you know. Because what stops you from doing some things that you used to do before you, you met Christ? It's not that you don't feel to do such so, so things, but there's something that stops you. And that is the Holy Spirit. And that is how we grow in the Lord. So we can always feel the nudging of the Holy Spirit telling us to do those things that he would like. And that's where that sincere word, the sincere milk of the word comes in. Because if you are sincere with yourself, God will be sincere with you. Or if you are kind of uh, fraudulent, you cannot be fraudulent and expect God not to take notice. You know? And that is very, very necessary in this day we can you can make the difference i as a pastor since the time i began to work with god i made up my mind to be sincere with myself with god and with people around me because if i'm not then i'm done for i'm just deceiving myself which heaven am i going and that doesn't mean that you don't see other pastors, friends, bishops, that are not what they say they are. But that should not discourage us or discourage you. Same way you could see believers, people going to church, claiming that they are Christians, but they are not what they say they are. You know them. So why are you keeping them? You know? So that is, uh, that's a food for thought for us. And uh, because... Um, the spirit of God within us is a jealous spirit. He always guides us. He always guides us to walk in the right path. He doesn't want us to suffer. He doesn't want us to... God wants us to be allergic also to poverty, isn't it? No, you don't like poverty. Who likes poverty here? No one. You know, God wants us to be rich above all things. He wants us to prosper. But he has paid for it. It will be at his own expense. If we walk with, with him. That's why David said, when I was young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children begging bread. So God himself is not, is uh, allergic to poverty. You know, he doesn't like it. You know, and everyone that follows it will not, will not be poor. Amen? Amen. So let's take note of that message. And uh, there are so many things that she has said. I think it's just the bottom line, is just being sincere with yourself. You'll be able to walk with God. Don't use any other person as a reference point. Use Jesus as a reference point. With Jesus, you cannot fail. You cannot make it. Things might be delayed. In my own case, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do, but he, he, he knows. God knows when you are waiting on him. He knows. Because you cannot be waiting on somebody and doing some other things. You know, if you are waiting on him, you put your whole heart, wait on him. How long? For as long as you wait on him. So that's it. So thank you so much, ma'am. Let's clap for Jesus and I'll be happy with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Thank you for your daughter. Thank you for speaking through her. Said the Lord has sent his word and great is the company of them that published it. Our company shall be great. And our own company shall be great as well as we publish the word of God. We live here, oh God, with that new determination, Lord, to publish your word, to reach out to everyone around us 
and tell them about the love of Christ. As we do this, oh God, we know we'll not be put to shame. And I speak to everyone that is going through pain, that you are mourning and you are grieving. You need comforting. You're in that miserable situation. That thing has happened again. Even though you know that it will happen, but it has happened. You wanted it not to happen, but it has happened again. You are not forgotten. You are not alone. The Lord will comfort you. God is the comforter. He will comfort you with the comforting so that you can comfort others. He's a God of glory. He's a father of mercy. He's a kind God. He's a righteous God. He will not let you down. He will not forsake you. He will not forget you. Wait on him. For those that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. I've never seen a man that regretted forever serving God. For people have regretted for not serving God. Wait for him and you will not be put to shame. Lord, we thank you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much.